Let's pray. Father, you are the great I am. And when we understand you as the great I am, we understand who we are and how we can be in you and you can be in us. But so much of the world and so many people in the world have turned their backs on you. And they follow after the things of the flesh. They chase after things that satisfy for a while. But never bring life, eternal life, like you do. So this morning we just come and ask you to Remind us of how great you are. Remind us of the power that you have and how much you love us and how Jesus set the example to live a life of sacrifice. And that when we understand that we have nothing but you have everything that we can give our everything to you and you give your everything to us. Thank you, Father, for that. Help us to surrender our lives to you daily, to take up our cross and to walk with you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so today I'm not going to continue the, the lessons from the Life of David series, although I will speak briefly about David, um, jumping ahead to further on in, in, in his life from what we've been looking at recently. Um, David is now king over Israel and is settled in his newly built palace in, in Jerusalem when he has an idea. Now, when David lived in his house, David said to Nathan the prophet, Behold, I will dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord is under a tent. And Nathan said to David, Do all that is in your heart, for God is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, It is not you who will build me a house to dwell in. 1 Chronicles 17, 1-4. Why would God not let David build the temple? We find the answer just a little further on in Scripture. Then he called for his son Solomon and charged him to build a house for the Lord. This is David, obviously, the God of Israel. David said to Solomon, my son, I had in my heart to build a house for the name of the Lord my God. But this word of the Lord came to me. You have shed much blood and have fought many wars. You are not to build a house for my name, because you have shed much blood on the earth in my sight. But you will have a son who will be a man of peace and rest. And I will give him rest from all his enemies on every side. His name will be Solomon. And I will grant Israel peace and quiet during his reign. He is the one who will build a house for my name. He will be my son, and I will be his father. And I'll establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. 1 Chronicles 22, 6 to 10. God wanted a man of peace to build a temple, not a man of war. Solomon was chosen to build a temple because he was a man of peace. If only the world would listen to the word of God and live in peace with one another, the world would be in a better place. Unfortunately, we live in a fallen world where man has chosen to disregard the teachings and love of God for the fleeting pleasure and treasure of this world, rejecting God in the process, and therefore we live in a world of violence and wars. This means we end up with days like today, Remembrance Sunday, where we set apart a special day to remember those who have lost their lives in wars and conflicts. Remembrance Day was initially set up to remember those who lost their lives during the Great War, now known as the First World War, but has subsequently, be, has subsequently come to remember those who have lost their lives in all wars that have happened and are happening since that time. 
The first Remembrance Day was known as Armistice Day. And the 11th of November is still known as Armistice Day. And was celebrated by the UK and the Commonwealth on the 11th of November 1919, a year after the end of the Great War. At the start of the Second World War, it was decided that a day of remembrance would be held on the Sunday nearest to the 11th of November, allowing people to pay their respects without affecting their work commitments. And since then, Remembrance Sunday has become a significant occasion to honor and remember those who served and sacrificed for their country. Now, for this next section of this message, I have to say thank you to the Reverend Shirley Murphy. It's something that I read online that she had written. It was just something I needed to share. So there hasn't been one day in over 200 years without some kind of war on earth. I mean, that's crazy to think about. Political, tribal, religious, territorial, civil, regional, and global wars. We've had a seven-day war, a thousand-day war, wars that have lasted a thousand years or more. Some wars have cost the lives of a handful of people, while others have taken the lives of tens of millions. Overall, it appears the very nature of mankind is to wage war. Referring to World War I, the hopeful phrase, the war to end all wars, was a short-lived misnomer. Clearly, these are the days spoken of in the scriptures, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginning of the birth pains. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another, and many false prophets will rise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Matthew 24, 6 to 13. 1918 marked not only the end of World War I, but the end of at least three other wars that have been raging simultaneously. The Southern China Revolt, the Second Sino-Tibetan War, and the Finnish Civil War. Not a breath had been taken before three new wars emerged in 1919. The Third Anglo-Afghan War, the Hungarian-Romanian War, and the Spartacist uprising in Germany. Wars few of us had any idea existed. In 1920, there were ten concurrent wars raging, some of which started well before World War I, and some that ended well after. That's how it's been for the past 200 years or more. Back-to-back -back battles overlapping each other, as though it were a race to end the existence of mankind. Remembrance Sunday falls on the Sunday nearest the 11th of November when the First World War ended in 1918. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Matthew 5, 9. Today we try to remember. We remember the victims of war and all those who have died to help bring freedom and to help make the world a better place to live in. But today is also a stark reminder that our world is deeply broken and divided because of human violence. For the Christian, Remembrance Day also presents a, a unique opportunity for us to meditate on the way of peace. God calls us to look to Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace. In the life and teachings of Jesus, we see that God establishes peace in his world in an unconventional way. Jesus does not, does not enter into physical battle in order to, to defeat the enemies of God. Instead, Jesus chooses the way of nonviolence. Jesus lay, lays down his life and dies at the hand of God's enemies in order to defeat evil. Only then does God raise Jesus from the dead in the victory over sin and death. In the person of Jesus, we see the perfect example of humble obedience, sacrificial love, and life-giving peace. With this in mind, Jesus' words in John 20, 21 come into sharp focus. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. We are God's sent ones, ambassadors for Christ, commissioned by the Holy Spirit to announce the good news of God's peaceable kingdom. 
But what is more, we are called to embody God's peace in the world. God is leading us to be his peacemakers. So on this day of remembrance, let, let us seize the opportunity and prayerfully take to heart the radical message of the Prince of Peace and follow his way of reconciling love. Let us discern together the ways in which God is calling us to be peacemakers in this world. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Hate multiplies hate. Violence multiplies violence. And toughness multiplies toughness in a descending spiral of destruction. The chain reaction of evil, hate begetting hate, wars producing more wars, must be broken, or we shall be plunged into the dark abyss of annihilation. Martin Luther King, Jr. Such an incredible quote, such an incredible thought. Today, we especially remember those who have given their lives through war in service of our country. They have left home and family, often to foreign lands, in the search of justice, freedom, and peace the effects of which we feel in our society today. The world could have been a very different place for us without their sacrifice, which cannot and should not be forgotten. The memories we recall this Remembrance Sunday should spur us forward in the search for true harmony and peace throughout the world. As the Lord commanded the apostles to do this in memory of me, as we celebrated today, communion, we gather this day praying for the graces of the great sacrifice of Calvary to engulf the whole world that we may live in the harmony for which Christ prayed. And to our fallen we say, we will remember them. Thank you for that. Man will never be able to bring peace into the world as long as we ignore the Prince of Peace. While Jesus Christ is not central in all that man does, there will be strife and conflict. While he is relegated to just another religion and not recognized as the Son of God and alongside Father God being acknowledged as the creator of all that we see and know, we will continue to be commemorating Remembrance Sundays until Christ returns. I love this Billy Graham qu quote. The world doesn't give peace, for it doesn't have peace to give. It fights for peace. It negotiates for peace. But Jesus gives peace to those who put their trust in him. We have been commissioned by Christ Jesus to go into all the world and preach the good news, the gospel, and to make disciples of all nations. If we want to see peace in this world, we have to be doing something about it. We need to live loving all people, sharing the gospel with all people, and praying for all people. We need to be sharing the peace that only Christ can give. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. It's only in God, only through Jesus Christ, that we can have peace. Peace in ourselves. We might not have peace in the world, but we can have peace in our lives because of what Jesus has done for us. Let us not just be remembering the dead, those who sacrificed their lives in times of war, but let us be praying for peace to come into this world as we go and share the good news about the Prince of peace. Amen. Some discussion questions? The favorite? What stood out for you in this message? Secondly, how can you be an ambassador for peace in your sphere of influence? How can you be an ambassador for peace in your sphere of influence? And thirdly, how can you reach out to those around you that do not know the Prince of Peace as their Lord and Savior, and then pray for one another. Thank you for those who've been watching online. We trust that you have uh, been blessed and that uh, you will consider these questions.
And if you are with someone else, you can discuss them amongst yourselves. Otherwise, journal. <laughs>